Yeah, so hello everyone. I hope we are I hope you are all having a great time wherever we are in the world. So my name is um David Olamide and um I'll be sharing with you guys um my presentation today on why you should be paying attention to the African games industry. So why you should pay attention to the African in this scene. So um I'll start with a quick intro introduction of myself. So my name is um, David Olamide, like I've said. Um, I'm the current CTO and lead gameplay engineer at Dimension 11 Studios. I have four years of experience with the African game industry. I won the African App Launchpad Cup 2021. I'm an IGD Foundation Scholar. And um, yeah, I'm a senior. I'm my senior year at the University of Obafemiwole University, studying computer engineering. And I'm currently working on my studio's debut title, Legends of Orisha, Blood and Water. And I've always been a strong voice of the African games industry. So what is the African games industry? I mean, who are we? So we have a very rapid growing, a very rapid growing in the game, gaming industry with 12% CGR yearly, which is an amazing figure from, I mean, from two years ago where um, the industry has been growing steadily. And we constitute 1% of the global games industry so we are a very very small number that's um from the um, gdc state of the industry of this year and we've produced them um, african titles games featuring african historic stories like orion legacy of kelvin others of Korea dance rather and um the industry cuts across all 54 african countries with stronger sports in south africa nigeria kenya ghana Egypt, Cameroon, Morocco, Algeria, and Ethiopia. I mean, all the images you are seeing here are, you know, logos of various African game studios. So, and if, I mean, very interesting thing is that we are all in this. So currently in Africa, there's no single triple studio. So all studios here in Africa are in these studios. But we have studios that are really moving towards the mid-tier. And um, after a couple of years, I mean, in some few years time, will become full-blown AAA studios. So we also have the African gaming industry that's like the sports community in Africa, which has also been growing rapidly for the past three years, over the past three years. So one great milestone for the industry was the fact that esports became officially recognized as a sport by the Confederation of African Esports, where um a body was organized was you know was formed for this purpose and um interestingly there are about 272 million plus people in the sub-saharan africa using mobile phones you know with internet on daily basis which means that um a good a, a good population that is an active population of them an active number of them are playing games and then um, we have 570 million plus dollars I mean, gaming market in Africa from 2018, data starts. I couldn't get a very recent start for that. So the industry is very, very lucrative and um, a lot of revenues have been generated from this African gaming industry. And it's not surprising that um, many of these um, numbers are coming from playing games made in, the, um, in Europe and in the US. So we have um, 700 million plus gamers in EMEA that's in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. And um, the hotspot countries for the African esports communities, that's the African esports um, industry, is um, Kenya, Nigeria, and Tunisia, Morocco, Egypt, South Africa, and uh, very recently, Cote d'Ivoire. And um, a new population of Africans are now playing made in African games, make it made in Africa games, meaning that um, many of the new games that have been developed by African game studios are now being played um, in those, you know, esport tournaments and events, which is a very good one um, because um, many gamers now are consuming local content and growing the African games industry. So the growth so far, over the years, we've been having increasing number of game conferences and events, including pitch events, game jams, and exhibitions across the continent, and. Um, it's so interesting that this year there were over 12 events that were organized across the continent. I mean, very large number of um, 
African game developers and gamers showed up and it was a very huge one. I mean, for the African games industry this year, events where, you know, people came to showcase their games, came to exhibit um, game jams, game tournaments, game competitions and lots more. And also, there have been an increasing number of game studios across the continent working on original titles. Um, like I said earlier, they are all indie studios. Yeah, but um, each of these studios have worked on very unique and um, original titles that has even caught the eyes of foreign investors and um, foreign markets. Also, we have a um, look at foreign investors that wanted to invest in African games. Um, very recently this year, we have Crazy Labs um, partnering with Carifest to you know, sponsor and fund mobile games in South Africa. And we've also been having an increasing number, increasing awareness in schools and communities about the potential of games and um, the positive impact that it brings. Um, it was always an issue in the African games industry, I mean, in Africa generally, um, where games was not really recognized as, you know, a form of entertainment or even a means of livelihood. But now there's more awareness through the events and um, conferences that have been organized and through games that have been made by the indie studios in Africa. And also there's an increasing number of made in Africa games, although most of the numbers are coming from the mobile games industry in Africa, but um, in general, we've been having more games made in Africa. So many of African games are now populating um, Google Play Store, I mean, the iOS stores and other mobile stores. And since COVID came, more opportunities have been made available for Africans in the industry. So more foreign opportunities in areas of funding, publishing, and even investment. And um, African mobile games are now getting more attention on various stores like Orion, Okada Ride, and Fleet of One. So all these are in areas of growth we've experienced in the African games industry from last year to this year. And um, for game events, um, these are the major events. There are actually other events that have been organized, but they are local events. But these are events that are uh, you know, cut across several countries in Africa. So we have the um, um, Africa Concrete Gamaton, which um, happened some weeks back. I mean, I, I attended the event myself. It's, a, it's actually the biggest so far in Africa where creatives in uh, the entertainment industry does um, theme and mission and games come together to exhibit, um, to showcase their, their games and listen to speakers who are experienced individuals in the industry. And also there was a global, there was a game jam, sorry, there was a game jam where different African creatives came together to work on different games and awards were given. And there was also a pitch event where very um, successful games that have made in Africa were pitched to, in, to um, publishers like Electronic Arts um, and some other publishers. It was very, very amazing. And then um, we had um, Game Jam Plus Africa, which was also a very big jam this year in, in Africa, where many Africans participated, worked, worked on games and showcased them on each.io. So we have Feja. Feja comes up very soon this year. It's also one of the very big um, tournament events we have in Africa for gamers, where gamers come together to to play games. That's esports now. And um, and you know some money from playing esport games so we also have south african game jam this is, a, this is one that is very unique to south africa that has been organized every year and we have fabgesi festival we have african games week we have an um, africa games plus esport career day we have business of games forum digital labs africa and women game jam and some other events so these are the major ones and um it's the numbers have been increasing every year and the participation as well has been increasing and it's so so cool so the challenges will be facing in the african games industry um i mean i have a number here a number of them here but there are also others we have um, the lack of awareness from larger population of africans so many africans still don't know much about games like uh, and the games industry and um, although the awareness has been increasing 
of recent, like over the years, but there's still there's still a large population of Africans that still don't know about um, the games industry. And also for those who have been in the industry and also trying to get in and do stuff, there's been inability to access internet, electricity, technical gadgets, and um, other resources. I mean, internet, electricity, and technical gadgets have been the major ones. So it's always been an issue for many Africans to work on their projects when you know they can't access internet, they can't access electricity, and, and also lack of access to funding publishers and collaborators for projects. So many projects don't get finished and published because of lack of funding and also support collaborations and publishing opportunities as well for their projects. And also unavailability of game design and development courses in school curriculum. Yeah, like in many schools now, game design and development isn't you know, part of the curriculum, maybe a course or even a degree. So many students in universities still don't know about uh, making games and um, developing games. And also we have um, difficulty in forming local communities for game developers and gamers with the aim of playing made in Africa games. So um, it's been very, very yeah, difficult for Africans to form communities where titles that have been made in Africa can, you know, be played in this sport, in tournaments, and other gaming events. So many of the games that are still, that, in, that have been played, that have been played in esports events are foreign games like games like PUBG, uh, FIFA, Fortnite, and other big, um, you know, battle royale games like that. So the next one is um, inability of African gamers to participate in global game tournaments. And this is a very, very unique one for Africa because when I checked many, you know, in other parts of the world, there have been global participation, like different um, gamers from different parts of the world come together to participate in global esports and game tournaments. But Africans tend to be excluded like in those events. So, it's, uh, it's it's been a very very serious um, problem for African gamers. Uh, although things are taking um, things are changing now, where we're having some Africans being allowed to participate in foreign esports events, but for major events, Africans are still not involved in those. And finally, lack of appropriate data that accurately maps current state of the African games industry. So even while I was, you know, doing research earlier this year, it was very difficult to arrive at accurate values, I mean, accurate figures now for different areas of the games industry. And that's because um, data are not made available. The industry has not been clearly mapped. So you can't know the total number of, you know, gamers in this region, total number of game developers in this region, total number of these, um, who are those playing these games, who are those making these games. And um, these data are very, very important. And I mean, they would really help in building the industry here in Africa, but they are not um, available. And although, I mean, we have a lot of challenges, but we still have opportunities um, for the industry. So Africa has a very large young population, many of which have access to mobile phones and internet, meaning that um, there's, if, there are games made available to Africans to play. They'll be a very, very great reach uh, because many young people have mobile phones now and the internet penetration is very, very high now. I mean, in many countries, it's over 60 to 70 percent. So even games that are being made here, if they are marketed, I mean, if the marketing is done properly, it can reach a larger number of Africans. And this is a very, very good opportunity for game developers and even studios to target the larger the larger African market. And also there's an increasing number, there's an increase in the consumption of entertainment medium, the big Africa culture and research years. And this is not just even for the games industry alone, it's also for the movie industry and the animation industry and also the music industry. So the 
the um people want to play more of African games, listen to more of African music, and um you know enjoy more of African content. And this is a very very good opportunity for those who are looking at these areas, looking into these areas of making content, creating content that depicts African culture, African history, and um, traditions. And also, there's an increasing number of game studios in Africa seeking collaboration, partnerships, funding, and publishing support. So many game studios now are working on original IPs, like I said, and they are looking for you know, studios to collaborate with, um, publishers to help put their games on different platforms, looking for funding to finish their games and and have a finished game in the end. And also we have uh, more media agencies publishing news and updates about the African games industry. So many of the events, um, many of the game releases and you know, many of the news we have from the African games industry have been put to the world now thanks to Games Industry Africa, AT Level, Africa Comic Age, the Afro Gamer and Game Industry Bees. So many of these publications will bring more awareness to the industry that, okay, yeah, there's an industry in Africa for game developers and even gamers where games are being made, you know, esports events have been organized, um, game launches, new game releases, and different news about the industry. So many of which I even read on these platforms, and it's really amazing to see, because in the past, it's always been the opposite way. You don't see news about the African games industry in many of these um, media agencies platforms. Also, there's more collaborations between the government and foreign organizations with the African games industry. So many of the government agencies now are now seeing reasons to partner to partner with African studios, partner with organizations organizations in the games industry and see how best they can work together to support and push the industry forward for example the aal cop in egypt where games that have been made would go through a series of um tournament series of um stages that's um selection stages where they'll be pitching events and um, in the end three games will be selected to win the cash prize and also get support from big companies like Microsoft, IBM, and other companies. And um, also we have the IGTA Foundation, which offers um, funding and support to, you know, game developers from diverse backgrounds and and um, diverse and marginalized backgrounds. So for, for this year, there was the Diverse Game Developers Funds, where uh, a couple of African individuals got um, the funds to work on their projects and there's also the usual the annual virtual exchange program where a number of africans also got in to get mentorship from men from individuals and mentors who have years of experience in games in, in the games industry so this kind of opportunities being open to africa has also helped in a lot of ways where more people you know get to learn and know about learn soft skills, hard skills, and know areas to focus on in building their game careers. And um, yeah, w one other thing I would like to mention is um, a need for more of African game content, like more of African uh, games that depict African history. For example, um, my game studio, Dimension 11, is working on an I an IP lens of Russia. And I mean, it's been very, very amazing to see the reception of the game globally, where we realize that it's not the case where games made in Africa are not really, you know, wanted globally, but the quality for those games have not really been delivered. Like those games have not really been delivered with the quality needed. So many Africans are realizing that and they are working on you know, releasing games that has so much quality and um, can, I would say, compete or stand, you know, in par with games that are made in Finland, in the UK, in the US, and in other parts of the world. And then one thing I would like to touch on before I finish is um, this line here the, about the African games industry. 
And the amazing fact about the African games industry now is um, the fact that more studios are collaborating together now to, to groom and build younger individuals in the industry. For example, now there have been clubs in universities being organized by studios, where studios now allow students to participate in internships, like coming in for maybe three, four, four, five, six months in their studios and learn um, the skills required for them to get into the industry. And many African developers now are now providing um, mentorships for younger individuals in the industry, those who want to learn one or two skills about the industry, those who want to know more, those who want to probably become programmers, artists, designers, I mean, different skills now in the industry. And uh, we need more support from other you know, countries. We need more support from other industries in, in the world. We need more support from other organizations in the world because we realize that uh, um, the, the industry in, in uh, Finland, in, in the US, in the UK, I mean, it's not on the same par with the African games industry. And um, many more, the more experienced um, individuals who come into this African industry to provide support in, in these areas, area of funding, area of um, marketing, in areas of even mentorship. And um, I mean, different areas will really help the industry grow. For example, during the Africa Communicate Gamaton, I was able to attend the event. And during the event, I was able to see um studios like epic games coming to have sessions on how to use unreal engine how to work with new technologies in unreal and it was really an amazing session where um some things that even i myself that has probably been in the industry for a while didn't even pay attention to so i was able to learn a thing or two about those so this kind of um support and um help is what has even brought the industry to where it is today because i can remember from 2017 there's been you know not so much to be heard about the african game industry but in, in this year 2021 i mean from january to now there's been a lot of like news all over the world about the industry in africa for example twin drums a, a studio that was formed by a partnership between um, a game developer in ghana and one in in Germany has been able to raise the bar for the African game industry by working on an original IP focusing on African culture, more specifically the Ghanaian culture. And they've been able to also hire African developers to work with them and also build their, you know, their game titles together. And um, this, in fact, brought a lot of, um, how they have put now, this, in fact, brought a lot of eyes like more the african game industry got a lot of attention through that and um, many more initiatives like that would really help build the africa games industry there was also spell fabric i didn't put that in my slide there was also spell fabric where um the fr french the french institute um organized a kind of pitching round for african studios where african studios submitted their game pitches and um about five games were selected from the african industry to partner with um ubisoft in germany to work on their games so this also is another way in which um foreign studios foreign game companies have been able to come into the african industry and support earlier they said there was also um the video coming in to organize events where they sensitize africans about there are tools and um, you know op different tools that they have on their platform that Africans can use in making games and and even optimizing their games and making them better. So th this kind of initiatives by foreign studios has you know really provided much help for for African studios, and um, that's why we see many African studios today being able to work on titles being able to even hire more developers because the more growth we have in the industry the more awareness we get to create and the more individuals we have coming into the industry and the more ips the more game titles 
we have in the African games industry. So to my last slide now, which is, um, yeah, about me, if you want to connect with me, um, on my Instagram, I'm Daviola, D-A-V underscore O-L-A. On Twitter, I am D-A-V underscore O-L-A, and that's my LinkedIn profile. And if you want to know more about the game that my company is working on, that's Dimension 11 Games, Legends of Russia, Blood and Water, you can check out our YouTube channel where you see our dev logs that will post weekly on the latest stuff we have in our game. And if you want to also earn that support in areas of um, publishing, you want to provide funding, I mean, we can have conversations in that light. And if you want to learn more about the African games industry in general, I, I think the best place you can get resources from now is the Games Industry Africa. is is the biggest media agency we have in Africa for, you know, the industry-related news, where you get to know about the latest trends in the industry, not just on the latest, even past trends, um, they always update those there. So thank you very much. I'm, I think I'm done. Does anyone have any question? Does anyone have any question? Oh, hey there. So if anybody's got any questions in here that come at the perfect oh. time. Yeah. Are you, you hear me? Yeah, sure. I can hear you. Oh, sure. okay. Good. Thank you so much. Oh, you've got a bunch of time left. You got a half hour. Yeah, definitely. I saw that. I saw that. All right. So, there, is there anything that you wanted to uh, cover some more? Um, not really so much because, um, I mean, like I said earlier, that there's still a lot to talk about when it comes to the African games industry. But I summarized those in those slides, and that was why I released those slides early enough because um, many other things still involve some research, and there are still gray areas about the industry and like i said there's really no enough data to map the african games industry many of the um the that i found are to dig them out you know from here and there and we need more people to you know make those mappings so that um, we can have more relevant data about the african games industry right right on um so can you can you talk a little bit about your experience like uh like when did, did you go to school to start working on games uh, did you, or how, how did that work for you? What got you interested in working on in games? Yeah, thank you so much. So I started making games in my first year in the university. Now I'm in my final year. I'm in my fifth year. So I started with the Unity game engine then in my first year. I, I just stumbled on it and I was like, wow, I love this. I want to make games. And I dig in. I started working, learning, you know, building myself uh -huh. then. So... Uh, down the line, I switched to the Unreal Engine, which I've been using for over four years now, making games. All right, right on. Um, so what what mentors and others from around the world can do to help support African developers? Yeah, like I said, I mentioned areas of um, funding. I mean, this is one very, very important area. I mean, to Give make us your money. Games, <laughs> yes, I mean, to make good games, you need money, actually. And I've seen many good projects, you know, fail because they don't have funding. They can't continue working on those titles. So funding is one very, very good area to support. Mm -hmm. Another area is um, publishing. We, as a studio now at Dimension Learn, we are looking for publishers to help put our games on um, the PC and also on consoles. 
but we haven't got one yet because to even get access to Microsoft or you know Sony, it's always very difficult for us. To even start a conversation is always very difficult. We don't have um, you know, any Microsoft um base around you or any Sony company around you where you can just reach out to a representative, you know, and have a conversation. Right, getting so, and getting dev kits, I'm sure that's probably difficult, I, yeah. Getting exactly. dev kits for sure. Yeah. So is there, luckily, is, go ahead. Yeah, luckily for us, when we attended the Africa Communicate Gamaton, there was someone from Microsoft who came around and was like, do you guys want dev kits? And I was like, why not? Yeah. We want. <laughs> so so what, what's your favorite video game? Yeah, it's Traded Redemption 2, actually, mm -hmm. by Rockstar Games. Right on, by Rockstar. Rockstar is Rockstars, for sure. Yeah, um, so, so what type of games are played most in the African market, and how does that affect the games that are being developed? Yeah, um, for the past couple of years, it's, uh, it's been more of mobile games that have been played in the African market. Like, uh -huh. for example, um, there was, there's this game, SpongeBob. Yeah, oh. hello, Africans. I lost it's you there for a second. I think your mic, your mic made a me? bunch of noise, and then... Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... I can't hear you now. Oh, what's happening? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. I, think, okay. I don't think it's coming through that mic. Tap your microphone like this. Tap on it. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's not coming through that microphone. It's coming through oh. maybe your headset or something. Um, how about now? How is it? I can hear you, but I think it's coming through your earbuds. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Is but it a lot better now? No, it's the same. It, it's I don't think there's any it's not it's not coming through that mic, it's coming through something else. Um, give me a second. Let me just change that. Oh, oh tap tap the microphone. Like tap Okay, yeah, okay, it's good. That's yeah, a that's a good sound though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, wait, wait, that stuff. So Africans are playing more mobile games mm -hmm. now, and that's because uh, many Africans can afford to get a PlayStation Four, or a PlayStation Five, or even even use their services or the Xbox. So many Africans just play mobile games, and you know games like Call of Duty Mobile, half tournaments, and um, uh -huh. Fortnite and PUBG and games like that. Uh, all the games that I'm terrible at. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm so terrible at. Um, yeah, so what, and go ahead. Yeah, you asked the second question about how it affects the, you know, the industry, the games industry now, people making games. So because it's easier to make mobile games and it doesn't involve so much technicalities, so many Africans result in making mobile games. So if you check the African games industry out, over eighty percent of games made in Africa are mobile games. So mm -hmm. PC games are not really common yet because it's it involves a lot of you know technicalities. It's more difficult. It involves more money, you know, and more skill sets. Right. So, what? What's like? What's your inter? Like, what's the typical internet that you have there? Oh, uh, internet. Yeah. Like, how fast is the internet there? Like, what's the upload and uh, download speed typically? Yeah, we use um we use four G internet yet. We don't have five G yet, Nigeria mm -hmm. yet. So we have about thirty megabits per second on average. Oh. Uh, Sometimes it could be the max, so 30 megabits per second. Oh, okay. What about like internet for your computer? Yeah, some same thing. 30 megabits per second. Oh, that's not bad at all, actually. Okay, here we go. Let's get some questions. What should publishers and investors look into the market? Know what what what, what should publishers and investors looking into the market know and understand when they are working with new developers there? Um, sorry, I didn't get a question. What? Uh, what should publishers, publishers that are looking into the African market, what should they know and understand when they're working with uh, new developers in Africa? Yes, I mean, thanks. That's a very, very good question. So, um, when publishers and you know, when publishers are working with African games game developers now to help publish their games, they should know that they should know they're expecting to see um, maybe. A Red Dead Redemption or uh, a Ubisoft, mm -hmm. um, a Ubisoft title kind of quality and all of that. They should know that. Well, those games are, cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make. Too, yeah, and they have teams of hundreds of people working on it, right? Yes. So they should expect to see games with smaller scale, but keeping quality and you know the originality of those games. 
I've played very great games made by Africans and they are not so big, they are not, you know, so massive, but you really enjoy playing them. Right. Okay. Um let's see here. Oh yes, the the market gets so little visibility there. Like so what yeah. what could uh what could you do? What could people here do to give visibility to the market to the African market there? Yes, I, I mean opportunities should be made more opportunities should be made to Africans. Let me give an example. Let's say I go on LinkedIn to apply for a job and um you just see remotes in the US, like you have to be in the US to take up this job or uh -huh. internships, you have to be in the US or in the UK, you know, in Canada to take up these internships. And it's Africans to I mean, they allowed, given a chance. For example, when um, IGD Foundation brought their Diverse Game Developers Fund program, I I, I, re I was a recipient of it. I mean, they gave us a chance and they realized that, wow, these guys have stuff, you know, to bring to the table. Like, it, right. was, it, was, it was really amazing. I learned a lot during those programs. Oh, awesome. So here's a good question from uh, Pluto. Where online can we find emerging and upcoming studios in Africa? Any good links we can share to help signal boost? Yes, let's signal yes. boost. First, uh, can you see the, uh, you probably can't see the chat, can you? Can you type into the chat? Yes, definitely, I'm going to now. If you wanna put your link in the chat, we could even pull that up and look at it. Uh, yeah. If you want to, or other studios, if you wanna drop those links into the chat, we can pull them up and have a look at them. Yeah, definitely. There's um that was my last slide where I shared um games industry Africa. I'm going to put it in the chat now. Yes, the underneath are the biz. Okay, I see. I see what you got there. Um, I will put that in chat. Right, if you want to drop some other links into that chat, that would be awesome. Here's one right here, you guys. I'm going to post and let me actually share a screen. Games Industry Africa, excellent. And Africa communicate. I mean, that'd be an amazing job putting Africa on the map when it comes right, to the games me, industry. Let me, pull this up. let me share this right here. Um, share screen. Uh, this one? Wait. Window Chrome tab. That's what I want to share. There we go. Chrome tab. Dun, dun, dun. Um, am I going to agree? Yes. Oh, yeah, this is a great site here. Africa Games Week's postponed. Africa Games Week. What? Yeah. And it was postponed. Yeah, it was because of um, the new variant of COVID, the Omicron in South Africa. That's horrible. Yeah, this is good stuff. So there's resources right here. Um, in the site, there's business, news profiles, event advisory, funding. African Game Dev Prototype Fund. That's super yeah. interesting right here. Apply to the... Oh, and you can apply to the fund right there. This fund is made up of some of the following pub publishers and partners. Another indie, which is now Neon Doctrine, right? Those awesome guys. Toad Productions, Raw Fury, amazing. Whitehorn Games, amazing. Yeah, Games. Games. And Aperna uh, Games Industry Africa. That's awesome. How big is this fund right here? between 5K and 10K funding to develop a minimum viable product, MVP or vertical slice funding is paid in installments based on projected milestones and deliverables. So a lot of people don't know what a vertical slice is. Can you explain uh, what a vertical slice is to, yeah. to the if chat I, here? Yeah, sure. A vertical slice is pretty much like um, a prototype, like just like an MVP whereby um, you showcase the important parts of your game for a publisher to see. Like um, when you're having your pitch, when you're going to pitch a game, you're not just going to pitch documents. So you need to have you know mechanics, a, a kind of um, demo showing mechanics in your game, showing very, very critical parts of your game. So, right. so that when the publisher is seeing what you have on ground, is they're getting a picture of what the final game would be. So it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be the whole finished game. It just have to be you know, a bit of what they will experience when they play the game. Right, it's basically like a whole level, right? Yeah, it, all level. detailed and everything. All right, let's let's pull up this link right here. And my dogs are barking. 
and I can't do anything about it. Let's see, <laughs> is this going to work? Yes, here we go. Africa Comicade, Gamathon 2021. That is November 15th through the 27th. So yeah. that so that just happened, right? Yeah, sure. I was there in Lagos where it dealt physically. There's events and opportunities. So they they have some great events with us. Oh, look at Humble Games. Humble Games is amazing. Humble yeah, is just like it. does so much for the community. Um, and their social network. So here's a way like for developers can can um network with each other as well yeah. right i've got i've got is um one of the very big you know frontiers in, in this space where they try to bring foreign opportunities to africans so mm -hmm. they try to bring steam try to bring epic games try to bring all bundles down here to see what people are doing here like come you guys come take a look and see what's happening in the african games industry right so here's another link that you dropped in here the afro gamer Nice. Tournaments, competitions, spotlights, gadgets, podcasts, opinions, and events. The Global Esports Federation establishes African Esports Development Federation. That's huge news right there. Yeah, it is. It is. What's this one right so here? So the Afro-gamers are more focused on the African esports, where they mm -hmm. talk about you know, game competitions, game tournaments, and events like that. Yeah, that's huge. So it's growing, right? It is very yeah. like a kind of a niche, a niche thing, but it is growing. So let's look, let's look at the spotlights here. Nigeria's players for the inaugural global esports game 2021. This is oh, this is older. Oh, October 7th, 2021. That's the news for that. Gadgets. I like gadgets. Uh tournaments and competition. Yeah, this is good stuff. Oh, and there's a nice podcast right here, which is awesome over here. I guess you can see it blinking. Yeah, that's amazing. So esports, can you are you do you pay attention to any of the esports that's going on over there? Um, I'm not so much in the esports space. I'm more in the you know game development space. But in this esports space, um, there's a very big conference called Feja Five. And it's going mm -hmm. to be holding, I think, this month in um, Cote d'Ivoire. And um, it's probably the biggest in Africa. It's, it holds every year. So there was uh, Feja 4 last year. There was Feja 3 three years ago. So this year is Feja 5. Oh, nice. So what's the next big thing that you're doing? The next big Personally? event you're going to go to? Oh, okay. At the African Games Industry? Mm -hmm. Um. The next big event, uh, I don't know yet because um, most of the events for 2021, you know, are over. But for January, I think there's a global game jump coming and many Africans will participate in that. So. Oh, wow. Uh, here we go. It's another question from Pluto's Island. You mentioned mobile is more popular than console. What is Absolutely. the state of the PC market? Yeah, it's super small. Like, you Many Africans don't play PC games like that, except for those in the esports space, and they are very, very few. And that's because of what I mentioned, you know, having a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5 is not, mm -hmm. you know, it's not cheap. You have to buy it. And also getting those, um, uh, getting the games themselves, not easy as well. And many some of these games require internet, which is a major issue over here. So many people, africans really play pc games like that although they are still those playing but the number is really really small and in the development side of things like for example my game studio is working on an original pc game title called legends of Russia. you can check out our youtube channel and some other game studios in africa to working on pc games but we are very very few and it's 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 a very very difficult task like you know getting talents to work with you very very difficult um having access to resources difficult having access to so funding very difficult. Luckily for us, we participated in the AAL Cup in Egypt, and we won, you know, twelve thousand dollars to continue working on our project. So if we had not gotten that funds, I don't know how we would have been able to finish our game. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's so you have to just scratch around to get money to work on your game, right? So and how, and how that's how many, many great things, Phil. Oh, how many people are working on the game you're working on right now? 
Um, we have nine in Nigeria. We have nine developers working in Nigeria. We have about three freelancers working with us outside the country. Right. Do you, Do you have an expected like release date? Um, yes. There's no There's no release date, but um, sometime November next year. Yes. Sometime next year. Release. Yeah. Uh, that's exciting. That's exciting, and because you know, uh, so many developers, even just all over the world, they will start a game, but they don't finish a game. So just finishing a game is a huge, huge task. You know what I mean? Just actually yeah, to complete it is. a game. It is, and um, the, the the very amazing thing is, um, many Africans like myself. I think we might have lost him. I think we might have lost him, folks. <laughs> oh, nope, yeah. nope, there he is. All right. Yes. So for me, I met my current team that we're working with now on Lens of Russia in a game jam. Like we just came together during a game jam, worked on a game project together, and we won in the category of the of the jam. And we're like, wow, we can do more with this. So we started a company together. So uh -huh. we need more of events like that that will create, you know, more collaborations between Africans and a big project to start up. And you know, move from there. All right. So, with the links that you shared me, is, is, there, is there like Discord servers with a bunch of African developers on it, all sharing each other's games and that kind of stuff? Yes, yes. I'll share a couple, and I will share um, the Discord server for Lanes of Russia as well. You can join our Discord server and see stuff that we are doing at Dimension Eleven. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Share it. Give me a second. Let me. Pull all right. It up. Discord is the best. It's yeah, it is. it's to, a quick way to share stuff, to network, to meet. Uh, also, if you're going to be in our Discord after this, David, um, and hang out for a little bit, if there's other questions over there. And I mean, we have an amazing Discord, discord.gg slash indie game business. There is thousands of game professionals in there from big companies, little companies. There's so much. There's like jobs in there, job postings. There is... Uh, there is looking for streamers. There is streamers looking for games to play. Uh, it's amazing. We have our, there's live events on there. Um, she does the pitch deck reviews, which is awesome. That is amazing. Uh, there's game industry news, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, let's see what else um, is in here. I think I saw African, some African news on your game industry news. I saw some news about Twin Drums mm -hmm. on your game industry news. I saw that there. Oh, I'm sure. There's there's also the uh, picture game that's on Twitter every couple months. That's on there. Yeah, so I just shared our Discord server invite link. You can join our server. Okay. I will I'm gonna put that into the chat so everybody can see it here. And if you guys anybody else have questions, David still got a good 14 minutes. So we can definitely answer some questions. In there, join that Discord server right there that I posted it into the chat. So besides that, so COVID, um, coronavirus, what is going on there right now with it? Since you're in your lockdown, kind of right. Um, actually, in Nigeria, we're not in lockdown, but um, in, in South Africa, yes, there's a lockdown where you can't move around because of the new variant of the coronavirus. So uh -huh. many events that are told in South Africa, including game events, have been put on hold. Many have been postponed to next year. And South Africa has been like the epicenter of the games industry in Africa. Like many of the events out there, many of um, you know, the big game developers we have in Africa are based in South Africa. So it's mm. really affecting a lot of things. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Where I live, people personally, they don't really, um, they don't lock down where I live. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. And anybody else have any questions? We've got some more time here. We've got 10 more minutes. I'm sure he'll be super excited to answer your questions. Well, do you have any, any, any final words or wise words for anybody? Just play my game, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, that's one. Definitely. Play the no, no. when it comes out. Right. Okay. Let's see. Let's uh, Legends of Orisha. I'm gonna see if I can. I'm gonna pull that up on uh, Legends. 
of Orisha YouTube. I'm going to pull that up. And so which video should I watch here? Um, you can play any of them, but I think it's more, you can, I mean, these are devlogs actually. There's no, you know, trailer or anything yet. So we just showcase different parts of the game as we work on them. Okay. So here, let me, I'm, I'm going to just bring this over here. I want to share the screen. I want to play this game. I love yeah. this kind of stuff. Uh, okay, let's see. Share. Uh, share my screen. Share my tab. There we go. And share. There we go. All right. Well, let's look at the very last video that you posted right here. Work in progress shorts. Oh, that's cool. That looks really, really good. You know, if I had to guess, I would be like, oh, that, that looks kind of like Conan Exiles. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, it does. It looks like it. You can see the stuff rendering in the background. Pops in. Yeah. I want what to try to do hand lens right operation. There. Yeah, that's like um, a grappler. Wait, you know, you can throw an ant and move around with the rope. That's like... Uh, so is there is there going to be building and stuff? You said yeah. You could, it, it, many of the showcases that we we show now, you know, depict different parts of the game. So what we're showcasing in that video was the environmental the environment art. So mm -hmm. we are trying to make the environment look as African as possible, mm -hmm. because um, many of the environments we see in games they don't look African. There's a typical way an African environment looks like palm trees, banana trees, you know rocks and the african lands landscape now so we try to showcase those in our game we try to depict that because we're making our game feel african now like let's uh -huh. let people experience africa let the people experience africa in europe in asia in south america in north america let them have a feel of what africa looks like so that's an area that we're focusing on with our game. right so and that's what it looks like right there huh Looks like yeah. Florida. <laughs> we have a palm tree in our front yard. So there's a video I want to share, but I've not been able to pull it up. So it showcases some other parts of the game. It's like a compilation video. Uh huh. Uh, can you, give, I can me, pull can it you up. give me the link? I could go to it. Yeah, sure. I'll try to pull it up now. Okay. We'll pull that up. Give me the link. I think that looks really cool. So one of my favorite games is Conan Exiles. Have you ever played that? Not at all. And all right. I don't really I'm... play games like that, actually. Really? <laughs> uh, I'm making I a game that... I don't play. Uh, Conan Exiles is amazing. It is. I, I love that game. And plus, there's so much, so many ways you can mod it. Oh, interesting. I love modding games. We use it a lot for role-playing and stuff. It's, it's fun. I think um, GTA has to be the most modded game I've ever seen. TT? GTA, GTA, GTA 5. Mm. Oh, GTA 5, yeah. I don't know, Skyrim. Like, I played Skyrim <laughs> with 100 mods, right? <laughs> 100 mods. Yeah. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff with Skyrim. I yeah. actually just, I just re-downloaded it again today. because, Or, yeah, I guess it was today because I'm like, I want to play that again. With the new so, updates and stuff. I'm trying to get the link. I'm trying to a second. Let me bring that up. Yes. So, it's here. Let's let it pull out from here. My bio. Let me see. Let's pull it up. I'm having some delay, you know, searching things, searching for things here. Yeah, like the internet okay. is quite terrible here. It's, it's not the best. So, I shared the video in the link. Can you? Let okay, up. let me pull that out here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That looks cool. Okay. That's cool looking. All right, let me share it here. Share screen, Chrome tab. So this was from the uh, game -thon, right? Yes. Yes, that was um, like a video showcase we had. 
Oh wait, you guys wait, wait, let me shoot. I gotta let me redo that so you can have sound. Right? I've been playing it without sound. Let's stop this. Uh share, share screen, share system audio, Chrome tab. Share tab audio. There we go. Now let's do it. NFTs. Can you talk a little bit about the NFTs in the game? That was yeah. cool. That was a good trailer, man. <laughs> yeah, the NFT part of the game. Um, we are trying to partner with. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, we are trying to partner with um, Refinance, a mm -hmm. blockchain company based in Dubai, to have our African assets, our African um, artifacts now in the game as NFTs, where players can play the game and. You know, find artifacts in the game, keep them, probably sell them, and um, we love the idea of having our games, our, our assets as NFTs, because we are seeing a kind of metaverse coming next. You know, in, in the games industry, we are seeing the Web three, the next big stuffs coming in the games industry, and we don't want right. to be left out as Africans. So we are trying to do an, a kind of early test of it in our game. Let's see what, how we can have NFTs in our game. Let's see. Um, that clay pot or that that bronze statue that that bronze statue or that you know that artifact that you love to see you you can own it you can have it you can keep it it can become yours digitally mm -hmm. so we want to make that idea resonate with africans so um and also we've not seen any african studio tr do this in their games so we want to you know lead and be the first to do that like we want to show africans that it's very possible to have such stuff in your game, and it would be nice, you know, for the game. Right, I'm ready to play this. So, there is there a mm. there like a very deep story behind the game? Yes, but should I spoil it? I mean, <laughs> no, no. But I'm I'm excited to play it. I think it looks awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh man, I think so. What are the NFTs going to look like? Yeah. So, for example. This is just an instance, but it might not be this way in the game. Let's say you find a, a, an old clay pot from the 1920s, maybe a, an, a Benin bros head or a Benin mode statue or something. I mean, any artifacts you find from the 1920s, so you can pick them up in the game and then have them stored in a game, in, in kind of an inventory for you to, you know, to hold. So that means that there will only be one of it in the game, whereby whoever finds it first owns it. So it's like you have the data, the data signature, the data identity of that model, of that asset that is in the game. Uh -huh. And it will have a value attached to it, like a, a monetary value, which is where the blockchain technology comes in. You so can hide you can like a rock in a cave under a bush. Exactly. Right? So oh. whoever finds it first. So it's, it will allow players to do more of exploration, to explore the environments looking for these assets. That mm -hmm. yes, environment. So here's a question from Gamer Composer, and I love that games do this. Will there be audio middleware used in the game, such as dynamic music for fights and exploration that change seamlessly? Hmm. How do we do here? Well, um, for us right now, we've not really looked so much into the areas of audio. Mm -hmm. Although we have an audio designer working with us. I mean, all the sounds that you heard in, in that trailer that we played, uh, they are all made for the game. Like, it's not a, any generic sound. We built up sounds for the game. So mm -hmm. we are looking at very unique African sounds, like sounds, that, things that sound like um, our percussion instruments, our, our, our organs, you know, all our traditional instruments that we have here. So we are not 
doing anything so crazy with with audio for now. Maybe things will change. And um, in the areas of audio, we even had issues, you know, finding people to work with us um, to undo the audio in the game because none of the initial team members we have on the, we had on the team had experience with audio. So we had to hire a very um, experienced audio designer from the UK to do some of the audio that we have so far in the game. So, and when it comes to um, exploration, yeah, our game actually allows exploration, but it's quite restricted. Like you can't um, explore beyond some bounded areas. Like you can't just go anywhere in the world. It's not an open world game. It's a kind of linear, you know, game that follows the story. So, but there are still explorable areas around. So you can still move around here and there, but is within bounds. But it's on a linear kind of path, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's fine. I mean, I love the game. We were just talking about it earlier. Oh, man, I, know, I can't even remember. I can't remember. A Plague Tale. And that was like, it yeah, was kind of open, but it was very, it was linear. You had to go a certain way. You know, you had to do certain things. And I think that's very, very cool. Well, David, thank you so much. I guess this next panel um, is ready. And you might want to stick around and, and watch this one, too. This Definitely. one is going to be a good one. So thank you all very much. I appreciate it very much. And Jay's right. going to be here in just a second. Back to back to back to back. <laughs>